What's up, guys? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Knows channel. This is Car Talk with the beautiful Atlantic Ocean behind me and a glorious winter day that it is. Spring is in the air. I'm trying to manifest spring here in the Northeast of the United States. And, uh, you know, you'll probably see a bunch of people like this gentleman just getting their lists in, getting their exercise in. No matter how cold it is, how terrible the weather is, this boardwalk will always be busy with the hardcore health enthusiasts out here getting their work in. So no excuse. And you'll see mostly it's not young kids. It's not those super fit in their, their teens and 20s and early 30s. You will see the folks, the hardcore who are walking this boardwalk are typically 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus. And it's the seniors, whatever that, that age might be, the 55 plus community, they're like, they are most active from what I see. So no excuses, no excuses. Now, the topic of today is protein requirements. Yesterday, a video popped up in my YouTube feed from Dr. Mike Isratel over at RP Strength, and he was discussing what the actual protein requirements are. Now, we've done a few protein requirements videos on our big sister network, the Dolce Diet Channel, and I believe we've, we've done at least one here on the Mike Dolce Knows Channel, but it's worthy of revisiting because Dr. Mike brought up a few good points. But also this morning, Jason Blaha over on his channel discussed protein requirements. And really, Jason was more specific on how to actually fulfill your protein requirements. So I want to take both videos. I want to blend them together and talk about, number one, what is what are our protein requirements? But also, number two, how do we actually meet those? Now... You know, and, and recently, I actually did discuss this as I'm talking to you now, I cited work from Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and Dr. Eric Helms. So they did a pretty comprehensive study on protein requirements for muscle protein synthesis in that what is the ideal protein intake for individuals who are trying to build muscle? Right, so if we think about protein requirements, we'll, we'll have specific um, RDAs of recommended daily allowance of protein intake for the average American. The average American is a sedentary lot of folks, unfortunately. The average American is not someone who's trying to build muscle. The average American, by statistics, is someone who is either overweight or obese and relatively sedentary. That's approximately 75% of the American adult population, which is, I mean, that deserves a whole nother video in and of itself. So we don't want to talk about what the RDA is because the RDA is the bare minimum to survive. We want to speak more of what Dr. Schoenfeld, Dr. Helms, and Dr. Isratel, um, Isratel we're discussing on what is the optimal protein intake to A, maintain your current level of muscle mass, and B, to actually increase your level of muscle tissue. Now, regardless if you are in your teens and 20s and you're just trying to get yoked, you're trying to impress the chicks, you are trying to turn heads on the beach, or maybe you transition into your 30s and 40s where you're really more focused on refining the physique that you have, building a little bit more muscle, and being that hot dad that's walking around, kind of the anti-dad bod. But then once you get into your 50s and 60s, then we're focused much more on muscle preservation. We know that muscle tissue has longevity enhancing effects. And Alan Aragon recently put out a post discussing the battle to maintain muscle as it is correlated to life extension and enhancement. The point of this is no matter where you are in the arc of life, we are constantly fighting the battle to A, keep our muscle tissue, and B, build new muscle tissue that we can then keep, right? So it's this never-ending cycle, and muscle tissue is directly associated with protein intake. Now, Dr. Isertel spoke more specifically on eating too much protein, and is there a benefit 
to eating more protein than you actually need. And during his conversation, he really honed in on the one gram per pound of relatively, I use the term relatively lean. He basically said one gram per pound of body weight, but then he also did discuss, well, what if you're 200 pounds or 300 pounds or 400 pounds, do you need to eat 200 grams, 300 grams, 400 grams as your body weight increases? Likely this is body fat. And he said, likely no. We say relatively lean. For us, relatively lean is someone who's about 10 to 15% body fat, then you can just hit a gram on there. If you're 20% or more body fat, well, then you can kind of scale that down. But what Dr. Mike said, and he cited quite a few studies, and I'll link to Dr. Mike's video. I'll also link to uh, Jason Blaha's video below this. I'll see if I can find this study again from Dr. Helms and Schoenfeld. If I can, I'll, I'll bring it into a, a new video. But what Dr. Mike had said was, science has shown, and, and he had a, a, a pretty, he cited a few different studies. The science has shown that increasing total protein intake more than 1.25 grams per pound of body weight doesn't really do anything. It does not add more functional muscle tissue. And I would say, in fact, it creates greater digestive distress. And if you go back to our carbohydrate video where we talk about the spillover effect, right? So the excess calories coming from protein negates some of the calories from carbohydrate ingestion. And then there is a spillover effect where the body is then urged to store some of these calories, which are simply units of energy, units of heat, to store these for later use, right? So then you start to store body fat simply through excessive caloric consumption, whether that's protein, carbs, or fat, once you get past this one gram per pound of relatively lean body mass. So what Jason had said, and it was actually a really good point, a lot of people fail with their diets and fail with their protein intake because they do not first prioritize their protein intake. They, they might prioritize their total calories they consume. They might prioritize their, their carbohydrate intake, their fat intake, and their protein intake, but they will not give specificity to protein first. And that was actually a good point that I thought was worthy of discussing here with you guys. When you are following a meal plan, you're crafting your own meal plan, let's say, and we talk about the four by four, which is the easy in-home way to start your own beginner meal plan. You don't have to pay anybody. You don't have to download anything. The four by four, four meals, four hours apart of lean proteins, green vegetables, clean burning carbohydrates. That's a great way to start. Green vegetables really means multicolored, but lean, green, clean sounds better than lean, multicolored, and clean, right? So lean, green, clean, keep that in mind. Four by four, four meals, four hours apart, four times per day. That just really locks you in. And eat about the same size meal times four. Your meal should be about the same times. This way there's not high ebbs and flows through your digestive system. And we're looking for more digestive efficiency. But with that lean first, those lean proteins, that should be prioritized. And that's what we do. Even on our three weeks to shredded program or our living lean programs, let's say, which you know are popular online products, protein is the first target. My team of dietitians and I, we sat and we looked at first, what are the protein requirements? And we ensured we met all protein requirements based upon activity level. And that goes through your intake form when you do sign up for the online platform. Protein is prioritized. First and foremost, we make sure we hit our protein targets first and foremost, and then we allocate carbohydrates and fats more so as units of energy. Now, yes, there are essential fats. Many of those essential fats actually come as a part of consuming protein, again, point for a different video. I'll do like how to build a proper plate in, a, in a, my next, a soon video, maybe not in the next one. So point being, and to wrap this up, we want to consume approximately one gram of protein per pound of relatively lean body mass. I like to start at about 0 0.8 grams of protein and then slowly scale upwards based upon our activity level. Once we're training harder, we're more consistent with our training, we're really pushing, we have some, some time under the barbell, let's say, 
we can keep urging future progress through slightly increasing total protein intake over the course of a few weeks and even a few months before we get to that 1.2, because we say 0.8 to 1.2, which perfectly fits in with Dr. Mike was saying, but also we talk about prioritizing protein first. Protein, build your meals around protein intake, and if you're following the four by four, that makes it easy. I'm 210 pounds or so, I'm about 208 when I woke up this morning, so I'm about 200 pounds. I need about 200 grams, give or take 20%. So that puts me right at about 160 to 240 grams of protein per day if I'm doing that calculation right, and I believe that I am. So right around 200 grams per day, let's say, that's simply 40 grams of protein times four or five meals, right? So that gets me at the bottom threshold of, of 160 or the average threshold of two of, of 1.0, right? 200 total grams. So I can eat somewhere between 40 or 50 or 60 grams of protein, which is a really nice mix. It's like four ounces of a piece of meat. It's, it's, you know, a couple whole eggs and, and some, you know, some, veg mixed up in there, you know, break that down, different videos. Um, so the point being, again, I'm, I'm getting slightly sidetracked with uh, what I'm seeing in front of me, you know, across this view. Um, the point being is we want to prioritize one gram of protein approximately per pound of relatively lean body mass, and you wanna prioritize your protein first. So anytime you think about your meals for the day, you think about, all right, how many grams of protein am I getting per meal? And from there, the, the calorie, the carbohydrate, and the fat, well, that actually easily falls into the total equation, right? So I hope this video helps. If you have any further questions on this topic or any other topic, please leave them in the comments below. Let me know if you enjoyed this video by simply giving me a thumbs up. And this is a brand new channel. A channel. We just crashed through 1,000 new subscribers. Thank you so much. Please consider being one of the first 10,000 subscribers to this channel. So when we blast through 100,000 subscribers, you will be able to say that you were one of the first OGs a part of this channel and really did help this channel to grow. This channel is for you, my friends, and thank you so much for being here. Until next time, boom. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here. If you like this type of content, short, quick, straight to the point clips, definitely subscribe to the channel so you're notified when videos like these come out. You might wanna check out one of these videos for more great content guaranteed to make you laugh, make you think, and make your life better. Let's go.